Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the stream. I am Razim, and this is Ebon Sales Exalted. I'm going to turn it over now to Kurama for the recap. Kurama? Kurama! Well, Moriarty, you're up for the recap then. I just bit into food. Okay. Recapitulation. As we went in to a place, I believe that's, I think it's heaven. It's heaven, right? Yushan, Kirk? heaven, yeah. He heaven slash Yushan, interchangeable. As we made our way into Yushan for, I, c I still cannot remember what our original purpose was there. We went there for a purpose. I think it had something to do with that black prince who did something with all those souls. There is also Nevis's goal of going to. I know get that, but I... that was a, that was always a side thing. We we did not set aside going to Yushan for that reason. That was just a oh hey while we're here we can do this. It was mostly about uh, making sure you close off everything, and well, this is a chance to actually see heaven as well. Okay, so we so we were coming here to make sure that we didn't leave any souls behind. Or whatever. To basically to make sure that our act was clean. I don't know who we were meeting to do that with. Because we were, like, of course supposed to meet someone. But we came here. We... I'm going to be honest. We, we... I am very fuzzy on the details of why we went to Yushan as well. You basically got invited there. That's not really necessarily a reason for Nevis to go. <laughs> but yeah, there were there was a one hundred percent. There was a reason why we came here, and we were like, "Oh, hey, that's important." So we gotta go. Like there, there was an important reason for us to be here, and I can't yeah. remember it, which the, is not uh, a good the thing. Dead. Okay, so it was about the dead. Mm -hmm. I don't know who we were meeting here about that still. But we're going to meet someone. We still haven't met them. We spoke to Mr. Lion Gate Guard guy and then got let in. And yes, he, he has basically been your guide and assistant. We, we, we went around to some stores and whatnot. I don't think we actually... I, I think we got some clothes and whatnot. I think Domino dressed us. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because of course he would. Um... Uh, that being said, uh, Cyril refused to wear anything else um, but his clothing. Um, and then we, then we, then we kind of just went to dinner. And at dinner, there was this guy who was like, "Hey, I've got this brother. I think it was uh, someone who friend. someone." Okay, a friend. A friend who he has a deep connection with who is doing horrible things, just killing lots of people, really nasty bad guy stuff, and he could take care of him, but he doesn't want to because he's his old pal. He's his old friendy friend. So he wants to make us mercenaries and kill this guy. Pretty much, yes. And he offered you some allies to do it with. Uh, At first, Cyril was not for it because he didn't want to just be a mercenary for this guy randomly. Um, but the rest of the party seemed to have gone uh, with his want of stopping this person. So Cyril went along with it as well, and also he he, he, he may or may not want to test his abilities. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but outside of that, uh, I think that's about where we left off. And as we were having this conversation, we met some other exaltations, one of which is Dog. Yes, Doge. <clears throat> and the other of which is a uh, big handsome wolf person. Yes. Big handsome wolf person is handsome. Thank you for confirming. Also, uh, we, uh, to my knowledge, we were we didn't go shopping with Domino yet. Uh, he still wanted to take us shopping. Yeah, I, I more or less just kind of decided Domino's probably going to take you guys shopping off screen because you guys don't need to go through that trauma. Cyril refuses to wear anything that Domino gives. You don't have a choice sometimes. It just appears on you. Cyril will strip. Well, darling, if you're into that. Anyway, uh, Nevis. Yes. As you guys are doing your shopping and seeing the sights a little bit, a small otter comes swimming through the silver water and he has a little hat and he has a, a little satchel and he's got a little uniform. And he literally just climbs out of the water near where you guys are walking and kind of being shown around by Seven. And the otter just what runs over to you and looks up. Uh, Nevis, King of Conquerors. Uh, yes, what can I do for you? I have a uh, letter for you as he opens his satchel reaches in, flicks through it before pulling out a uh, piece of paper and offering it to you, Nevis. <clears throat> Nevis is going to look suspiciously at the paper. It's fine. It looks like a piece of paper and you can see handwriting on it and, like, a stamp on it. He will read it. Uh, it is a formal invitation to come to the Grand Coliseum uh, to face the King of Conquerors uh, in battle for the title of Conqueror. A magnanimous dispensation. For the title of Conqueror. Can I accept $110? Okay. Toshime, thank you so much for the donation. The donation goal has been completed. Excellent. Excellent. And apparently it is um, stamped and approved by the Bureau, Bureau of Heaven for this to go on. And it looks like the, the duel is set to happen in about 45 minutes. To fight somebody for the title? Yes. Somebody that's already calling themselves the King of Conquerors. Yes. Well, that just will not do. So, you shot... <clears throat> you shot and set up a duel. Yeah, one... Statement. I believe this should be amusing. And the otter will point. The Coliseum is right down that way. It's about a 10 minute walk from here. Come, Caribarius. Come, Marticus. We shall show them who is the true king of conquerors. You got this. Yeah, we, we can do that thing later. Marcus will not his What head. was that, Kurama? You were sounding uh, sorry, really sorry. muffled for some reason. Sark is going to say, ah, so that thing that we were going to do, we'll just do it later then, right? 
It seems so. So you guys head off to the Coliseum together? Yeah. Mm hmm Yep, I'm going to follow that. It is a grand, beautiful Coliseum. It is massive, made of moon, silver, and orichalcum. And you can see already it's starting to get packed up with gods and beings of... Things you've never really seen before. And as you head in, all you have to do is show your letter, Nevis, and the celestial lions that guard the Coliseum allow you in, along with your uh, allies and guests. Uh, Seven does explain that this is basically one of the biggest forms of entertainment in Yushan. As you guys head in, and he's able to guide you through the Coliseum to the waiting room before you guys, before you would go on, Nevis. And Guaco, Cyril, Sark, he takes you guys to basically perfect box seats to be able to see the entire uh, battlefield. Did somebody say perfect? Oh, darling, I'm already here. You think I would miss your duel, darling? <laughs> <laughs> Perish the thoughts. I mean, it's not my uh, duel. It's uh, Nevis's. Jeez, I think I mean, you would know that, uh, Domino. You're helping him, darling. No one likes a uh, tattletale here. Do not break immersion here, darling. I'm the one who breaks the floor of the wall. You don't. I don't know. I seem to be doing a better job of it. Darling, I am just letting my perfection shine through you to make your imperfection seem more perfect. No need to thank me, darling. Right. Baco, Cyril, Sark, you guys are given wonderful seats, some um, food and refreshments. You're basically in your own private box overlooking the Coliseum. Uh, Nevis, you are in a preparation room. Um, and you are basically getting ready to be guided out to face your enemy in the Coliseum. Uh, Nevis, could you roll a d10 for me real quick? Uh, there we go. Oh boy. Well, okay. I guess we're doing this then. Nevis. As you march onto this battlefield, it is a dusty, sand-filled uh, area. Uh, solid ground, but a layer of sand. Uh, the entire Coliseum area is empty, no place to run, no place to hide, just facing your opponent. And as you march forward onto the battlefield, you see there is no opponent yet for you. Until a few minute moments later, you hear the announcer. And now, we call forth our current champion of the Coliseum. The King of Conquerors who faces all challengers. Now, make way for your champion, everyone. Give him a warm round of applause. As the gods go up and cheer and you see the gates go up and from these gates 
A figure walks out. Tall, imperious, powerful. He is a small pine marten in moon silver armor holding a spear. Oh, so cute. And he lifts his spear and the cheers go up from the crowd. I am Nevis, King of Conquerors. Bow down before Kurt? me. Yes. <laughs> You're going to make me fight another Martin. Another Martin named Nevis, King of Conquerors. Now, who dares to? Oh, oh, uh, 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 uh. Uh, oh, 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 my God. Oh, oh, um. I am the true Nevis, King of Conquerors, and none shall claim my title. <laughs> um. And he lowers his uh, spear towards the imposter. Um, um, uh, you're, you're, you're Nevis. That is what I said. Oh. Who um, are you to steal my name? Uh, he kind of glances towards the audience before looking back at you. <clears throat> I'm, uh... I'm, I, I'm Marty. I, 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 I do paperwork in the Bureau of Seasons. I'm in charge of, uh, Winter. Kerr. Yes? What is with you and the uh, adorable names? I wanted to give him something cute. <laughs> Krabby, Marty, like, come on! <laughs> I wanted to give them cute names. I thought his name was Kriberius. <laughs> yeah, his name, his actual name is Kriberius. Yes, but he introduced himself as Krabby. Yes. Of all things. Yeah. This motherfucker be a, be a Krabby Patty. <laughs> Anyways, carry on. Also, also, if they're going to be around here for a while, I figure I was going to give them cute names. Fair enough. Um, I, I, I do paperwork for the Bureau of Seasons during winter. Please don't kill me. I offer you this one chance to surrender yourself into my service for your theft of my name and title. Or else we Expl shall fight to the death. Expletive. Boo! Nevis has honor. He will give this opportunity. He, he, he throws down his spear, throws himself on his knees before you notice. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't think you'd actually show up here. I just wanted to get some recognition and get some extra quintessence, okay? That's all. It doesn't pay very well being just a paper pusher and just doing, uh, running files around. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Nevis is standing... Truly imperiously over Marty. I accept your surrender. Come, squire. And Nevis at that point will turn and begin to march out. Uh, Marty will reach over, grab his little spear, and start running after after uh, Nevis. Continue Woo! Actually, you could hear laughter coming from the uh, from the stands. 
Oh, I know. But uh, I'm specifically booing. Oh, I know. I'm 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 sorry, Mr. Novus, about using your name. You shall prove your sorrow. Uh, how? Well, you dared to take my name, therefore I will at least make sure that you do not tarnish it further, and that the tarnishing you did cause will be rectified. I, I can try and do that. I shall train you into a warrior, and you shall serve under me. I'll, I'll do my best. I'm not really much of a... I'm okay at fighting, but I mostly do... You fighting. will be trained! You <laughs> will be a warrior worthy of the title you stole. Yes, sir. Nevis will nod and continue walking. As you soon meet up with everybody else. I'll be honest, I was kind of looking forward to a, a, a fight, but I'm okay if you had rolled any, time. If he had rolled anything but a one or a two, it would have been an actual, like, big thing. But I, I wanted to do something cute if he rolled a one or a two. Because I wanted to see how Nevis would act if it was a little Martin who stole his name and pretended to be him. You can still set up a fight. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to fight the Coliseum, you could. As, as you get back together with Guaco, Cyril, and Sark, and the others, uh, Nevis? He, he just doesn't see... I, I'm sitting here like... Nevis would not fight for sport. Training? Mm -hmm. Sure. But not as a sport thing like this. Bad for fun and entertainment. Yeah. Now, defending his honor, like somebody stealing his name, that is a different matter. But. And Nevis, as you get back with the others... Guaco, Cyril, Sark, as you get as you guys are approaching Nevis with this strange Martin walking beside him, looking very sheepish. A gateway suddenly opens about two or three feet away from you, Nevis. It looks identical to the gateway that you guys came through to get here. And, Nevis, you hear a voice call through the gates. My lord! My lord, Nevis! Are you there? You recognize this voice. It is Ferris. And he sounds both exhausted and, like, worried. Nevis is going to try and go through. Uh, you would be able to go through this gate. He he is stepping through. Ferris, where have you been? Uh, do the others follow? Yeah. <laughs> I don't no know hesitation I trust into the unknown. I don't. I don't think I trust the random portal. I do not go. I mean, Sark is just gonna follow everyone and go into the portal. I know the type of exalt I am. I can handle it. 
Cyril, do you really not go? The random portal. I don't, I don't know why everyone else is just like, yeah, this is cool. I mean, Nevis, it is. He hears his uh, butler sounding panicked and tired and worried. So, no hesitation on his part. Uh, however, the others are probably just following Nevis because, you know. So, I didn't know him going through walls was a thing. I just know he's like, I don't need to reload my weapons. The others do what they will. Nevis just doesn't hesitate. As you come through Nevis along with Guaco, Sark, um, you see you see Ferris there. He is black clad in uh, jade armor, green jade armor, and he is holding a long lance. Um, he looks like haggard and exhausted and he looks towards uh beside him is what looks to be an old man his hands are shaking as he has them held towards the portal and he looks at you is this your entire party lord uh sorry repeat that is this your entire party, my lord? No, I meant before that part. Oh, uh, there's an old man standing beside him. His hands outstretched towards the gateway, and it looks like he's keeping it there and held open. There is one more that has not followed. But what seems we, to be the matter? We, we will discuss this once your party is through. Uh, we cannot hold the gateway open for much longer. Please get them to come through, my lord. You must I gather your party you. before venturing forth. Cyril, we require you to come through. Cyril will hesitantly enter the portal. As you step out, Cyril, all of you look to be in what looks to be a small village um it looks to be a very similar to the village that you came from with the puppeteer uh very similar to that style of like huts and such the difference here is unlike that village which had very basic like little wooden walls and such like mostly like sticks strung together to keep wildlife out here you guys can see massive wooden ramparts uh enclosing the entire village like these are like two feet thick walls of solid wood around each uh, area. And Nevis, you would recognize this. This is one of uh, Ferris's charms that he used, that he used to create these ramparts. And as you guys have come through, Ferris drops into a one-knee bow to you as the old man just kind of falls on his rear and the gateway closes. My apologies for calling you like this, my lord, but it has been difficult to try to find you, and only recently have we been able to get enough power in order to attempt the summoning. What, it is good to see you again, Ferris, my friend. But what seems to be the matter? I arrived on this island a few days ago, my lord. 
and I found it to be under siege by a group of uh, beastmen. Two other villages on this island have already been purged. Their men and women, their men murdered, their women wish they were dead, and the children have all been mutated into beast folk and used as cannon fodder against us. We have currently been able to repel them so far, but they continue to siege us at all times of the day. I have been able to maintain our food stores as well as water source through my charms, but it is a tax, tax upon my essence. Once the... Okay. I'm feeling like I'm missing details here. Uh, has he said where we are? No, he has not said where you okay. are yet. And has he said who's doing this? Uh, a group of beastmen. Okay. Is what he knows so far. He could give more I, details I, if you asked. Okay. Hypothesis. This may be the individual you were asked to fight. That is very possible. What do we know of the one causing all of this? I have faced him in battle once so far. He is a general uh, under a ruler. He is serving one known as Mahasuchi. That is the name of the lunar that you were going to kill. This is one of his generals, it seems. I see. Do you know where he is? I do not, my lord. Most of my uh, resources for the last about day have been shoring up the defenses here and ensuring that the people here are safe and we are able to maintain a siege. You have done very well. Do you, where, do you know where we are? I can have a map brought to us, my lord. Good. Please do so. My armies are elsewhere at the moment. It will be done, my lord. And he is going to stand and begin to give orders to these scared-looking people who, despite their kind of fear, you can see that they are listening to his every word and immediately getting to work. And before long, a map is brought to you, Nevis. And Ferris points to one of the islands and goes, This is where we are that I was told. And uh, based on what you... You've seen another map before. Uh, based on that map, the island that you guys were on is about 10 miles away from here. You could make it by boat. Pretty... E probably within, like, it'd be about two or three hours at most. So, so we are in the same vicinity as the mercenaries we were already dealing with? Uh, there, they would be on an island about four miles away from here. A little bit further to the north. We're the, still... island, the island that you guys started on is about 10 miles to the south. So you are close to the mercenaries, though not where their actual base is. Their base is a little bit further north. <clears throat> okay, okay. I've been able to confirm two villages have been utterly wiped out on this island. I believe there are three others, but I have not been able to confirm them. 
However, I believe it is likely to assume that they are lost as well. <clears throat> Do we have an ability to get a message to this island here? And he'll point at the uh, one that has our, uh, you know, the Ark ship or whatever it was called. I do not possess such a means, my lord. Um, we might be able to get to the shore. Many of the boats have not been destroyed, but I believe such an area would be guarded. Um, here you hear Kribiris, uh speak up. Um, Nevis, I, I could get a message across through the crabs. Very good. Through the areas. crabs. Please send a message to the army as well as get one to the ship. Uh, both parts of the army, it sounds like it is. it would be a better idea to bring it all here. I can do that. It might take a few hours to make it there, um, but they should be here by tomorrow. We can maintain the defense. I can do that. Not a problem. Uh, as he literally just kind of crawls down your shoulder to the ground and begins moving to the edge of the village. I see you have picked up an ally, my lord. I have picked up many. And Ferris is going to look at Guaco, Cyril, Sark. Uh, Hello. Hello. Nevis is Hi. calling after Kriberius. Do also send a message to insert name of spider person here. Yes. Spider god thing. Uh, God, yes. That we are needing to withdraw forces here for a large threat. But I am counting on them to keep those villagers safe. Sounds good. Uh, also, um, Rygon, you yes. and your little band of group have gone oh, through Rygon, a portal... Here. How you guys have gone through a portal with Nevis and the others, and you guys are on a, um, you are on a small island currently that is being attacked by people. Uh, you're not sure what. All you know is that it sounds like it's just beast folk at the moment. Okay. What kind of folk? Yeah, sorry I'm a little bit late. I Last time we started at nine, so I figured it was at nine. You're good. It was at nine. Central. Yeah. No, last time we started at nine mountain. It's because we started a little bit late because of uh because uh where we'll put in a little bit longer. Oh, okay. I'll keep it in mind for next time then. No worries. But yes, that this is you are with the group at the moment if you want to hop on into the server. I will be there momentarily. Get in here, Dogicus. Dogicus. Uh, this man, he has uh, short brown hair. Very short. Uh, he is clad in full emerald armor. Uh, it almost looks like full plates. Uh, it does not have a helmet currently. And he has a very long spear in one hand. Does uh, he um, enjoy long walks on the beach by any chance? Uh, he possibly could. Ooh. He rises from where he is bowed on one knee to Nevis, and he gives a short bow of respect, crossing his free hand over his chest as he bows to you guys. Uh... Greetings, my name is Ferris. Uh, my apologies for meeting under such difficult conditions. I am the second in command of Nevis's armies as well as his butler. And I am a dragonblood. 
Um, it is a delight to meet all of you. I wish we could have met under better circumstances. Oof. And I suppose thank you for assisting my lord in helping us celebrate this island. Well, we're we're happy we can help. Um, these beast folk, uh, these are children that are being turned into beast folk. Is that correct? Correct. Like, from what from what I have been able to find out in my small forays out from this village, I dare not get too close uh, and give away my position, but. I believe, yes, they are using the children basically as fodder. Basically throwing them at the defenses and they don't care if they die or not. Simply to cause as much devastation and death as they possibly can before they're killed. With my fortifications, it is... They have not been able to do anything here, but... There have been at least two other villages that have been wiped out, and I found corpses there. Many of which appear to have been eaten as well. I believe they're killing the men, taking the children for conversion, and taking the women for recuperating their numbers. There's a very big look of distaste on Ferris's face as he says that. Our goal here will be to capture, not kill. The only one that will be killed will be those that were part of this group originally. Those will be very easy to tell. They are all beast folk. Uh, rabbits. They are extremely dangerous. They are extremely fast. I have faced some of them in combat and I was able to kill them. They are extremely fast, extremely nimble, and they will always usually be in groups. I have been able to avoid the younger ones. They are not nearly as difficult to deal with. Uh, very easy if you know what you're doing. For someone untrained though, they would still be a deadly threat, though. But for anyone of us who is trained in combat, this should not be a problem. I believe he's going to go back over to the map that he showed you, Nevis, and point to a spot. I believe they are somewhere along this area of the island to the north it is where they seem to be coming from that direction so i believe their main camp is somewhere over this way but i do not have any hard location of where their camp is or where they're currently set up can any of you uh, scout out to find a solid location on them? And he's asking this of, you know, the others here. Nevis has no skill and in stealth. I might have one or two who would be willing to take such a dangerous task. They aren't exactly the best, but... They are solid in their enthusiasm. It would be appreciated. Or I Sark's could just take it straight to him. Sark's going to look up and say, if it's, a, if it's a camp, if it's an enemy camp you need to be snuck into, I'm your guy. Just tell me where to go. I can perform reconnaissance and uh, meet back here. 
<clears throat> Being taken to them would not be wise, as we do not properly know their setup yet. Please do go scout out their camp and find out as much information as possible. For now, I shall assist with the defenses here. And again, capture, do not kill. These children do not know what they are doing, and I would rather not kill them for no reason. Yes, children always give the best pets. Alright, so you're gonna head out then to try to do some reconnaissance work? Statement. Yep. If you require additional assistance, I too am trained in the arts of discretion. So this sounds like a Sark and Cyril task. Two is better than one. <clears throat> I usually work alone, but I can use the extra help. All right, then. Let us begin our venture, then. Sark and Cyril. Comforting. Give... Do not worry. If you are captured and killed, I shall make sure that our quest is successful. Give me a stealth plus, I think this would be a finesse. Stealth plus finesse roll, please. I, I, I thought the whole point of this system was we choose which of the F abilities we use. Usually you do, unless it's something that I decide is basically it's always going to be. Oh. Fair I enough. I feel like this is... I feel like this is going to be a finesse because you guys are trying to be stealthy and quiet. I I can see arguments from many sides on this. That's a five for me. Force is hey. harder, but like fortitude, you know, trying to stay quiet, uh, maintain your breathing, keep from... Uh, being noticed, I, I can see that being a good fortitude thing. Do I need to breathe? Uh, Apparently not if you got enough fortitude. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I, I'm pretty sure stealth force would just simply be me, like, somebody shouting at the enemy, I am stealthy! And they are so intimidated they just believe it. Same vibes as the bear man. Exactly, right? That is one problem I gotta say about this uh, particular system is the fact that it's like... You're supposed to... Make, you are supposed to uh, use your best attribute and yet... You're, you're encouraged to argue your point, mm -hmm. which is fine. Except I really, I, I have to agree, I really don't see very many arguments, at least strong enough, for using any of the rest aside from finesse with stealth. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's why I said it's like, it feels like finesse is probably the one to usually go with with stealth. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so, our first leg of the venture, as you guys are making your way through, everything is going well. You guys are able to get through this jungle-like landscape pretty easily. It's nothing too bad. But as you hear movement, you see a pair of small rabbits, rabbit-like people. They maybe two and a half, three feet tall. 
They have little daggers at their belts, but otherwise they're not really wearing anything. Their coats are gray. And Cyrilly, you're able to stay quiet, but Sark, you stumble a bit when you see them. And your foot hits a dick and it snaps. And both of their ears shoot up. As they both turn and look and kind of draw their daggers. Who's there? Come out now! And they're looking towards where you guys are. Can they see us? Uh, they know your general location. If you tried to sneak away, they would probably be able to find you by, now that they're listening for you. Rabbit would like to know your location. I am going to stay perfectly still. Thoreau, what do you do? Um, I'm going to move away from him. <laughs> Sark, give me a stealth roll, because you're trying to stay perfectly still. It'll be the same... Uh, type of roll again. That's better. That's better. All right, Sark, so you're able to stay hidden this time. Cyril, though, since you decided to try to move. They are able to locate you. What? Well, why? Ah, uh, because they have a charm. They have charm. Mm -hmm. that, they have a skill. That? They have a charm. Okay. And you triggered it by moving. Uh, as you see, these two little little rabbits bound out in front of you with their tiny little daggers, which looks kind of... Their daggers do not look... Actually, I can say this actually for sure. You're from Autochthonia. Their daggers are fucking shits. And you can see these two little rabbits. They look like fierce and and scary like burying their little teeth and then when they see you Cyril they both kind of just freak out and start shaking and backing up a little bit they look absolutely terrified of you Cyril all good all good Jaffer don't worry uh, we're just running some reconnaissance right now and I'll get you up to speed once we get back to the main group where you're with. Uh, yeah, Cyril, you just automatically succeed on intimidation roll without having to roll. <laughs> what? But what, what? What? What are you? You're not. You're, you're not a person. Uh, is it? Uh, do these look like the children? They yes. Or... They 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 are very much children. You can hear okay. it in their voices and such. The, these these are not the because you said they were rabbits. These aren't the rabbits that started everything. No, the, the, those rabbits, uh, from what you were told, I apologize for not being more clear about this. Those are very tall, large rabbits, like this okay. size size are bigger than a man. These are clearly child sized. These are likely two of the children from one of the uh, villages. Cyril just looks at them both and goes, statement, no witnesses, and he snaps both their necks, and I'm kidding. <laughs> um... Is Sark? Sark is seeing this, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sark's going to break stealth and say... You four, what are you doing? Uh, the, 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 the kids are going to look towards you 
and they're just kind of going to jump and stare at you as well. And one of them points their dagger towards you with both hands, and it's like clearly like shaking like a leaf. What, what, what is this? You, you you aren't like people. What, what, what are you I'm doing gonna look, here? I'm going to look Gosh. at one of them and say, you dare point your dagger at a fellow beastman? I'll have your head for, for treachery such as that. Cautionary. I do not take threats to children lightly. You're, you're not, you're not, you're not one of the rabbits. That means you're not one of the beastmen that's on their side. I'll have you know that I've been serving. I remember the name of the general, right? Uh, you were not given the name of the general. Um, you only know the name of his lord, Mahasuchi. You do not know the name of the actual general. They weren't able to find that information out. Just come up with a generalized name. No, just, so, I'll, I'll just, say, just say a Mahasushi. Just, just, just I'll Mahasushi. I'll say that I've, I've been serving Mahasushi uh, for longer than they've been alive and basically tell them that uh, they are to respect me and my rank or, they'll live to, or they won't live to regret it. Okay, give me <laughs> a Intimidate. Intimidate plus your stat of choice. You can refer to me by my husband's rank. You don't want to be Mahasuchi's husband. No. I, I, <laughs> one an of Mahasuchi's husbands. Mm -hmm. So, fun fact, in, in the first age, before everything went to shit, Mahasuchi was one of the most beautiful looters in all of creation. And... Uh, you guys know how you guys have all that, that big grand aspiration that your character is trying to do? Mm -hmm. His was to bed every exalted in creation. He was about two thirds of the way there by the time the usurpation happened. You know what? Fair enough. I can respect that. Hold on. Yeah. What race is Mahasushi? Uh, he. He, he is a lunar. A what? He is a lunar. It's not he's a the fox. same thing Zim is. He's not he's a more fox, a wolf. is he? Okay. Nope. Nope. Uh, he's for now. Um, I shared it in the Discord. I'll pin it. I was going to say, what? he's not a fox. That's I'm dangerous and close to Moriarty. <laughs> I'm not seeing a thing for intimidation. What kind of role would that be for ability? Uh, let me jump back and check out the character sheet again. I just posted the picture of Mahasuchi in yeah, the... Yeah, I pinned uh... it again. Oh, thank you. Uh, let me jump over real quick. Where did you put the picture? It's in the Ebon Sales. Sales. Where I almost forgot you? about bird person as well. Oh damn, that guy's hot, no wonder. That's how he looks nowadays. Is he still trying to bet everyone? No, he wants to destroy all creation. Aw, oh, come on! Lazy, you didn't finish what you started, so instead you're just gonna try to start over, idiot. Well, you okay, can you. convince him. All right, give me a presence roll for this. Who? This would be a presence roll. Who? Um, okay, then that's no. Then that's no other dice. Okay, you don't have any presence at all. Nope. All right, so you'll take a. You'll have a minus one penalty to this. So you will roll one less dice than whichever one is your best. That was the wrong dice. By the way, I have posted the uh, image of Mahasuchi in the uh, Tabletop Image channel on the Discord. Do search by today's uh, 
title for those watching this on YouTube later to find the image. I will right. rehabilitate this man in sin. Roll another d10, Sark, since you rolled a 10. That will be two successes and you get a reroll. Pretty sure also saying the name Mahasuji is just like a flirt at this point. <laughs> ah, right. Mahasuji. Three successes. Oh. <laughs> Three successes. Uh, yes. Uh, they are both buying it as they both lower their uh, knives. And kind of kneel down in front of you, Sark. They look absolutely terrified of you now. In a booming thunderous voice, I'm going to say, now then, that's the response. Now then, that's the respect I deserve. To make up for your insolence, I have a task for you. They will kind of nod their heads a little bit. And I will look at them and say, You will go to the enemy camp without your weapons. You will tell them that you are surrendering. However, you will stay the night there, and you shall, and you shall learn as much as you can. When the attack is signaled... I want you to go to the top of the towers, of one of the towers, and wave your hands as the signal. During the attack, we will be sure to pick you guys up and learn as much information and use the information to bring to our lord. They will both nod their heads before they quickly go scampering off towards the village again. And, and that was the village where, like, we had our friends. Yes, right, that is a... correct. To, this is... to surrender. Yep, they are running back to the village where Nevis and all the others are. All right. Can I be like the the watchman? I'll be well, I'll be watching out for him. <laughs> yes, you could. Okay. No, it's physical impossible. No, oh. get shut down. No. All right, let's have another uh, stealth roll from you two as we continue the venture. Good job overcoming that botch. Sorry, my my mind just blanked again. What what do you say? Uh, give me another stealth roll. Stealth plus your best attribute or finesse. Both both of us? Yes. Okay. You guys are going to start. Uh, so ventures are basically long-term roles. Uh, basically, it's an extended action. You guys are sneaking over there, so it's going to be a multiple roles once you get uh, there, and then you guys decide what you want to do. Two, three. Two. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Sorry, what are we winning on? Sorry, I was just looking at this real quick, doing my counting and checking my stuff. All right, reroll that 10 for me, Sark. Since you got a 10, you get to reroll that, and it counts as two successes.
You guys are both able to nimbly make it through the rest of the jungle. No problems this time. There's a few other patrols, but this time, Sark, uh, Cyril, you guys are both ready for it. And you are able to avoid it. No problem. As you soon arrive at what looks to be a very large campsite. You can see tents laid out. Uh, fire pits, latrines. Um, and you can see these large rabbit men moving around. They're equipped with pretty basic looking gear. Swords, spears, shields. Uh, very basic armor. Looks like leather armor. Um... And it looks like they're all just kind of going about doing their tasks. You can see, sometimes you can see a couple of little rabbits moving around. Looks like they're carrying stuff, doing manual labor or carrying messages. Uh, and you can see large pens have been set up. And you can see about 40 or 50 women stuffed inside of them. And they look absolutely terrified. 40 to 50? Mm-hmm. Okay. The ones mm -hmm. that they're able to take alive, at least. Not very nice to tell a woman what their age is. What? You know, they're 40 to 50. Not very nice. Um, at least in the pen that you can see, there looks to be around 40 or 50. You're not sure if there are more pens around here. Uh, as you're watching, give me another stealth plus... Another stealth roll, please. Same as the last one. Okay. It's going to be three success. Dark, nine successes. Sark, you and the shadows are basically one. There is no way any of these guys could even possibly see you. You literally just vanish from sight and sound. Um, as for you, Cyril, you move nimbly and quietly as you guys are both able to move into the camp and get a better look. Sark, with that roll, you are literally able to basically make your way no problem through the camp and you're able to make it to what you are able to figure out is likely the general's tent. And here you can see, this time you can see a rabbit. He has tattoos on his body, uh, silver tattoos etched in his skin and fur. And he is wearing basic armor over his body. And he has a very large uh, great axe that he is carrying around as he is barking and shouting orders at the rabbits to move faster to get things ready for the next attack. That even though one of the little villages is holding them off, they can't let that slow them down. They have a schedule to keep for their lord. And he's not going to let any little group of humans stop him from delivering this island of Mahasuchi.
So he's he's definitely like awake. Like he's not sleeping. He is fully awake. Oh yeah, this, this is probably the guy in charge here that you're seeing. All right. All right. Um, I'm gonna guess take a mental note of what he looks like, and uh, then go and try to find. Uh, yeah, go to try and find the guy, I came, the person I came with, and uh, tell him, "Hey, I've got the, uh, I've got the person." What kind of tattoos? Uh, Cyril, you would recognize these are moon silver tattoos. Okay. Uh, I assume they're sort of like a more tribalistic tattoo. Uh, they, they, they mean he's a lunar. I know, but I'm saying like the design of them. I'm assuming are more like slightly more tribalistic. Nope, just pretty much basic tattoos, just like etchings of like uh, lines and sigils and such. Nothing okay. like super hey. special. Yeah, you know, like a generic uh, Asian tattoo that probably is the barcode for a thing of Doritos. <laughs> also, I'm actually still, it's, right? uh, it's it's just the number forty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're with me, Cyril. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, yeah, I'm gonna go and fill Cyril in on what I found and uh, who the uh, who the general is. It looks like uh, Cyril, from what you were able to find out while you were looking around, it looks like there was about five pens of uh, women, each one holding around forty or fifty. Oh boy. And it looks like around between you would hazard 400 to 500 uh, beastmen, warriors, and maybe 200 to 300 children. Okay. That's a lot of guests. Mm hmm. Yeah. It very much looks like, from what you were able to see, though, the children are not very respected at all. They are bullied, pushed around, beaten, uh, and they look like they're doing this more out of terror uh, than anything else. Mm. Alright. I will relay that via serialisms to... Uh, my companion. Uh, I'm gonna, Sarka's gonna try to meet up with Cyril and just say, hey, uh, do we have everything we need? Do we want to, I guess, try to cause some havoc even though it's daytime? Is there anything else you would like to try to do while you were here in the camp? You are more than more than uh, capable if you would like to try something. You are an exalt. Hmm. I, I think, yeah, I think I'm just going to make a Actually, I should probably go to Cyril and say, uh, Hey, Cyril, uh, I guess we've got the information. I don't really know what else we could do here unless you have any ideas. Advisement. I think it would be best for a regrouping and for everything to be taken care of all at once. Besides, I would hate to take glory from the so-called King of Conquerors. Hey, yo. Hey, yeah, I would like to point, point out that he was... He has officially earned that title. You went into a ring and didn't even like you. You you looked at a mark and said, "Me." <laughs> I agree. Um, but before we head out, I'm going to take stock of where they keep their weapons. Uh, you would be able to find that with that nine successes. That would be very easy for you to sneak around and find 
where they are keeping their uh, weapons, armaments, their food supplies, basically everything. You would have a full map of their camp. Uh, their their food supplies. Would I be able to sneak in and uh, sort of wreck, uh, just sort of trash a little bit of their food and sneak out? You may make a stealth roll to attempt to do so. Yes. All right, so that's, I don't know how many successes. One, two, three, yeah. four, five, four successes there. Uh, yes, you would be able to infiltrate their food supply. Uh, it looks like most of this is dried foods. It is inside a wooden hut and wooden crates you can see a lot of rice grains uh non-perishables a lot of it salted meat um yeah you could set a fire here and you could basically burn this entire place sky high within probably a minute or two you know what uh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna uh set this set their food stores on fire and uh get out yep you you ignite it it goes up like a freaking ball of tinder and you can hear panic screaming yelling orders being given before you bound out slipping between the shadows as these buns are hopping around trying to get water to put out this fire and it's full on chaos chaos and panic as this is going on as the shadow lamb forms around all the dead bunnies <laughs> you you didn't say these buns are cooked i'm disappointed <laughs> you are able to make it up uh, undetected as this is going on you have a pretty good idea that this is probably going to wreck their food stores for at least the foreseeable future. They are going to be very, very hungry. I'm, I'm going to say that's a mission success. Uh, by this time, has Cyril left the uh, area? I would assume Cyril will wait for you. Uh, okay, well, if Cyril has waited, I'm going to go to him and say, hey, I uh, burnt down their food storage. Statement. I would have not advised that course of action. Based on the panic well, inside you're, you're seeing, Cyril, it looks like it was a very successful action, though, too. Yes, and I would have not have advised it. You guys head off, then? I should state, he's not. He, he doesn't advise it, not for the fact that it was, you know dangerous but more for the fact of you you you, you, you like most of these people aren't the bad guy mm -hmm. you know sometimes you gotta do the dirty shit in order to win the war but yeah i'm gonna head back with uh cyril hey you you guys are able to make it back this time. This time, no problem. And you are able to report to everyone. Would That's someone like? To, I, would someone like to, to give, tell? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I don't want to give Cyril a quick response to him saying. Uh, in response to him saying, sometimes you got to do the dirty shit in war. Cyril will simply reply, with response. I know quite what is needed in the aspects of a war. I do not believe that that was necessary. Uh, 
uh, Sark's gonna nod and say, "I will. I'll take your your views into consideration the next time an opportunity presents itself." But like, say it in like a genuine way. Gratitude. I appreciate that sentiment. Does it take you guys long to get back to camp? And would someone like to tell Jaffer what we're up to at the moment? Oh, it's Jaffer? Yes, he is here. Burning down the bunnies' homes. <laughs> Makes you sound like a villain. Yep, they are hot cross buns now. Well, technically, these are just kids that were captured. Exactly. So, to give you an explanation, Jaffer, uh, a basically a gate opened while you guys were in Yushan uh, by Nevis's butler slash second in command. And it pulled you to an island about 10 miles where the original group started. And it has been invaded by a group of basically bun buns, an army of bun buns, human bun buns. You know how you're a crow? These are bun buns. They slaughtered the men of these villages. They have captured the women basically for breeding purposes. And they've abducted the children and have started turning the children into beast folk as well. Not just the men, but the women and the children. <laughs> <laughs> and so far, the group has... Nevis has sent for his armies. And Cyril and... Uh, Sark went out to investigate the enemy camp to try to gather information. And since then, uh, Sark set, set fire to their food stores and burned them. And now they have just made it back to the village, which is currently basically a bastion uh, enclosed in four walls, uh, basically two foot thick wood. And that is where we currently are at as Cyril, Sark, you guys make it back. Uh, but before you guys get back, real quick, Nevis, Guaco, uh, Murder, and uh, Dago, which... Uh, Don't teach my hamster to suck eggs! Oh, we have influence. Uh, real quick, uh, Dago Kuhn. Hop into the server. I am. Oh, you are? Okay. Sorry, I didn't see your icon. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I can roll dice. Okay, no worries then. As long as you are here. Uh, this is good. Uh, I just do want to make sure check. you pick your character. How do I do that? Did you actually pick a make a character sheet on there? It'll be you'll leave it blank on Fantasy Grounds, but oh no, I I wasn't aware that was something I needed to do. I... It just lets your name show up. Yeah, oh, as okay. well as an icon on Fantasy Grounds with your character's name underneath it. Um, we could we can do it right after if you if people would like for next time yeah. no worries it literally right. takes uh, seconds um sure if you're willing to guide me through the process then click player right. on the it... right then click characters okay. and then there you go uh, it just shows me a blank sheet like a blank everything do i type it do i search for my character click the uh, plus sign in the bottom right Okay. Set it to the same icon, or give it the same icon that I sent you for Discord. Okay. 
to do that, you just double click the uh, icon in the upper left on the sheet, put in the name and stuff, and there you go. Oh, go go ahead and continue. No no need to pause on my account. No, no worries. I was checking something. Uh, because I got influence, so I was checking. Uh, yes, approve that influence. I approve that influence. Because actually, that fits into what I had planned for things that you guys did. It's nice when an influence does that, isn't it? Like, oh, this already fits into what I had planned, so I can edit this little bit in a little bit more. So, but for you guys, before Cyril and uh, Sark make it back, uh, you guys all see, I suppose actually it would be uh, Captain, if he was keeping watch, uh, he would see it first. Two little bun buns, two little bun bun boys coming towards the gate, their hands raised up. And it looks like uh, they are surrendering for all intents and purposes. In my naivety, I immediately go up for pets. I just give like a like a happy bark. I can smell that they are kids. I, at least I assume so. Yeah. And I go up yeah. for pets. Would uh, this be a situation where they could be... I don't know. Uh, what was it called? Caging the wayward hind? Uh, they would not count as animals, no. Okay. Yep. They're, they're basically like... Uh, anthro... They're basically like little anthro rabbits. Okay. Uh, as you get the gates open and you rush out, Captain, uh, they both kind of pause and seem a little confused at the dog coming towards them, but they both kind of pet the dog. Yes. Yes, I... you, you get good Go pets. Yes, all the pets. And, and I, I'm hoping... Lunar steer flock. <laughs> potentially, potentially. Is there anything I need to roll for that? Uh, you would need to you would need to establish a emotional bond with them okay. to try to get them. Then essentially, I I'm taking them under my wing. I'm like these are two lost kids. They give great pets. I want to take <laughs> care of them. Whether or not uh, they actually establish a bond because of that, that's up to them. It should uh, be a roll. Yes, there there will be a roll later once the. Uh, once we've taken the time to roleplay out things and such. Okay. Uh, but Nevis, Squacko, Murder, you guys see Captain open up the, uh, open up the gates and go rushing towards these two little, uh, bunnies who are approaching with their hands up. And they have now started petting the dog. Well, I do want to say that while the others were, uh, while the two of them were off on their stealth mission real quick, Nevis was organizing with the other, with the members of the village to get pit traps uh, dug up, or dug out. Um, None shall see me. Though my battle as well may as give me away. nets and such at the bottoms, uh, specifically with the idea of trapping feet and such so they don't just easily climb back out or hop back out or anything. Okay. Yep. You could get to work on that. Um, that was his primary plan so you would be working outside then uh when these kids uh be would be arriving and captain comes running out to them when you would see them
Uh, Nevis shall go to investigate. Okay. And what about... What about you, Murder, and Guaco? That's interesting, Murder. Oh, oh. We will get to that in a moment, murder. Uh, Guaco, what would you be doing here? I'd probably be conversing with uh, Nevis, fine. With Nefs's butler, trying to find out why he had chosen this side, and probably playing gateway with him. Yes, he would be uh, happily playing gateway. He is a very good gateway player. Um, What's gateway? Basically, the equivalent of chess in uh, creation. It's uh -huh. like chess mixed with Yu-Gi-Oh. Yep. It, it's the main game of strategy and creation. Are there deck building elements? No, okay. It's more like a board game for the most part. Gotcha. And yeah, he would be happy to converse with you, basically explaining that um, he would be, he stepped in because. Hello? Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. You were just mid-sentence I... and then suddenly nothing. I don't know how I got muted there. Oh, I almost um, got my internet cut out there for a second. Ba basically, where did I get cut off at? The reason being... Oh, the reason being, uh, basically from what he saw, this invading army was base was was slaughtering people this was not like actual like battle this was just wholesale slaughter and genocide teach my hamster to suck eggs so he stepped in to defend those that he could uh the only issue is he's only one person so there was only so much he could do against a giant army but he had enough training in order to be able to at least make it so they couldn't take at least one of the villages and to be able to protect the people here. And he's been trying to make plans before Nevis showed up to get to some of the other villages that might still be around to rescue those people that he could. Okay. His main plan, though, was to basically use the one person who could use sorcery here in this village to open the gateway to try to find Nevis and to call him through and hopefully to bring some of his army through too. And that's when you hear the calls of uh, basically that there are two rabbits outside coming towards the gate and they are being they are basically now petting a dog wait we had two people leave with the knowledge that they're turning people into rabbits these are two child rabbits, so they, 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 they are mentioned by some of the villagers that they look to be some of the children. 
Well, we can let the dog explain what they're doing here. Oh, oh, is it for me? Okay. What's the dog doing? Mm -hmm. He is um, getting pets. Yes. I am getting pets. Uh, my little gaggle of followers, that, that's what I'm going to call them, gaggle. They're kind of like, you know, they're they're huddling around. They're, they're just like, oh, what are you doing? Stop that. They're the enemy, that sort of thing. But I'm just... I would I would like to like roll something to determine like yes these are friendlies. Okay, you may roll. Uh, that would be a doo -doo 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 -doo. Hmm. That would be a presence roll. So you can make a presence plus finesse roll. You have 10 dice. So you roll 10d10. Right. Yeah, I don't think any of them burst, but I think that's three successes. Let's see, one, two, two successes. Two successes. Seven and higher. Sevens and higher, okay. That is high enough to see that it seems like they're surrendering, but it doesn't seem like they're telling the whole story. Okay. Then after the pets are kind of done, I get a bit serious and I just simply ask, where are our companions? Where are my companions? They're going back to camp. Camp? Yeah, the, the, the camp. That's what they said. Did they say anything else? They told us we had to surrender. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and that is when murder comes out with his scythe. The side starting to glow with a baleful red light. Oh, at that one, I get in front of the kids. No. And that is where murder will basically be able to explain the side that only works on those who need judgment. It, if it is swung at an innocent person, it will do no, no damage. Only if they are lying or basically being dangerous will the scythe actually harm them. If they are true in surrendering, they will be unharmed. Dog, um, Captain Howe listens, but it's a little hard for him to understand that. All he sees is blade, blade equals death. No. Uh, um, Captain Howe will stand his ground. With tense music playing. <laughs> right? I'm curious what murder is going to do here. Is murder going to murder? Or is murder going to try? Moiter! Is Captain an honest person, Doug? Um, I would say probably out of everyone, he's probably the most honest. I would agree with that. As the DM, I would also very highly agree with that as well, from what I've seen and heard from him. State I do not I am not I do... made for dishonesty. I do not believe the scythe would be any danger to Captain based on the way he has acted. Yeah, 
So, Murder, he literally just kind of taps the blade against you, and it basically just goes through you without causing any harm to you. Captain ca Captain kind of, like, winces, and it's just like... Uh, and it oh, just kind of oh, goes okay. through you a couple of times, and then nothing happens. Okay. He very, very, like, he, he's still, like, I'm watching you, kind of just stands off a little bit to the side and just gives, like, a short little, little nod. But this is with him fully believing that that scythe is not going to harm the kids. From murder, uh, the, both the kids look very, very scared and worried because it's like, that's a freaking scythe being held by a freaking burb burb and they kind of hug each other and look absolutely terrified as murder you swing your scythe at them and as you swing your scythe at their legs uh a veil of mist suddenly moves up from the ground in front of them and the scythe strikes the mist and bounces off. Oh. Captain Howell's not sure what to make of this. And neither kid seems to notice the, the mist that had gone up to protect them uh, before it literally just dispersed a moment later. Uh, uh, when you say, what is going on? They're both going to look very confused and just look at him. It's like, we aren't doing anything. We surrender. Captain will go back up and to, to comfort them. He's not sure what's going on either, but he, he's pretty certain the kids aren't at fault. He's just like, you know, they're they're just kids. You god man. It's pretty clear, though, that they aren't really trying to deceive anyone with that. They they have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, once again, when you do that murder, when they reach out to try to touch the scythe, a hey, thin uh, veil of mist. Sir? Yes? Do make sure you're reading those off, please. Oh, sorry. Murder <laughs> will hold the scythe out and ask the kids to touch the flat of the blade. When you do that murder, you... Once again, as they reach their hands out to touch it, a thin, thin veil of mist will rise up from the ground and basically block their hands from touching the blade. Yes, murder is a crow. Beast folk. The mist seems to... Murder will try to slice the blade through the mist as it appears. This time, the blade when the blade touches the mist, it's like you're hitting a wall, Murder. It's like you're literally bashing your scythe against a solid wall and it's holding.
think at this point, uh, Captain Howells, like his uh, speaker, would would start speaking and just say, like, Sir, I do not know what it is you are trying to do, but perhaps we should take these kids inside? Has anyone seen something like this before? Murder's going to ask. And all of you who is nearby, uh, Nevis, Captain... Uh, murder. You guys can clearly see this mist is basically rising up to protect these kids whenever uh, they would get close to the scythe. It just seems to flow up out of the ground or from basically underneath the grass. The grass here is pretty tall. It goes up to your knees and it seems to just come up from the grass to block the children and almost like it seems to be trying to keep them away from the site. I have not seen anything like this before. They both, the, both of the children just seem very confused and they don't seem to know anything about what's going on. Perhaps there is something more here that we do not see then. What would I need to do to try and, uh, like, sense something? If I could even possibly sense whatever's doing the mist? Um, do -do 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 -do. So I'm checking something real quick. Um, and I have a question as well. Yes. What is an aurora? Aurora? You know, like the uh, the northern lights here? Okay, it just says I can sense all auroras within 50 miles. Is that uh, Would that allow me to sense if there's like somebody maybe causing the mist? Uh, no, it would actually be like an aura in the sky. Those usually only happen when something special is going on in creation. Oh, okay. I, I figured it was just a fancy way of saying, like, aura, like someone's aura. Nope. It'd be like the Aurora Borealis. Okay. My bad. No, you're good. No problem. Um, does anyone have a way to sense a dematerialized spirit or to see or sense spirits? I don't believe anyone here does, but I want to ask. Not this time. Otherwise, you may make a sagacity roll, Nevis. Murder will let the and... children pass, but will not trust them as he can't confirm their innocence. And if I've got nothing in it, it's a minus one. All right. I'll try it anyways. One! Uh, this mist is clearly moving of its own violation. This is clearly not a natural effect. This is not something volition? that should... Hmm? You, you mean volition? Yes, sorry. There's clearly something up here, but you don't know what is actually doing this. Duke. Ferris, could you take a look and see if you figure out what is, what this mist is coming from? 
Ferris will nod. He will reach out and touch the ground. After all, Ferris he... is Nevis's people to do this. <laughs> and he will point 30 feet that way. There is something there, but I cannot see it. But I can sense... I can sense something on the earth there. Nevis is going to stand and plant his spear in the ground. I am Nevis, King of Conquerors. If there is a being here that is hiding from my view, reveal yourself. If you seek to protect these children, then I ask that we work together instead of against each other. For I do not wish to see any harm befall these innocents. For a moment, nothing seems to happen, Nevis. Before... A few moments later, you see, all of you would see the ground around you guys and around most of this entire area is covered in mist. Like, it is going... Basically, you can see all the way out to the edge of where the jungle starts. And everything from the village to there is covered in a very thick white mist. And exactly where Ferris pointed, about 30 feet away from you guys, you see uh, a figure appear. He's wearing pale silver gray robes and a cloak. It looks like a traveling cloak. With the hood up over his face. And you can see from the cloak. Uh, the mist is just coming off of him. And basically just sort of pouring out of him in all directions. Uh, he reaches up and pulls the hood back. Uh, he has grayish white hair. It looks to be, you'd guess, 24, 25 years old. Bit of a tan. Um, can't really see anything under the gray cloak he is wearing. Uh, and he has, like, his eyes... The people seem gray, almost white themselves. And he's going to look at you, Nevis, as you are the one who talked to him. Come on, computer work, please. There we go. All right, sweet. Sorry, my computer didn't want to work for a second. Um, you are going. This this figure kind of looks at you, Devis, before it's smiling. I'm Aizu, chosen of mist. And he gives a kind of little bow. And 
what is your purpose here? Oh, I was traveling through it first before I saw what was going on in this little island, and I stopped to investigate. And you seek to protect these children alongside our goals? Or in line with our goals? I don't think kids should be involved or hurt in conflicts with adults. I fully agree. Perhaps it would be better if we worked together then. I'm not really one to work with conquerors, no offense. That is your choice. However, I would prefer you not get in our way. He just gives, like, his smile seems to grow a little bit. Who's to say you won't get in my way? <laughs> well, in that case, be my guest on going and dealing with those responsible here. We shall maintain the safety of these people, though. He's going to reach back and just pull up his head again. I might take a glance, see what's going on. Better not hurt those kids, though. As he turns and you see him vanish again as the mist seems to disperse. And you can no longer see him anymore. I like that guy. Nevis will shrug and head back to the, uh, into the village. I'm continuing his organization for the, uh, defense, you know, the traps and such. Again, they are not, these are not deep pit traps. Their main priority is basically netting that will be, uh, anchored above the ground in the bottom of them uh, and their purpose is simply trap them so we can minimize casualties you know mm -hmm. uh, murder says that spirit is not innocent if it were the scythe would have passed through it uh, murder you can probably guess, thinking about that, that was not a spirit. Based on the way he introduced himself, that was an exalted. Likely, based on his introduction and the way you've heard um, another one introduce themselves, that was an exigent. That was a chosen of mist. So he would have likely been empowered by the god of mist. Mist, smoke. Uh, it's seem like he put a focus on mist but you don't necessarily know what that means with him I need to step away for a minute i'll be back no worries oh yeah no it, it's you can probably make that assumption they are not innocent <laughs> yes you guys are able to get these two children into the village what are you going to do with them um i would like to take them with my group 
The child. I believe out of everyone here, um, my little my little gaggle of followers would be best equipped to take care of two children. And yeah. Captain Hal has uh, proclaimed that they are under his wing. The villagers would have no problem with that. Now, do the children have any problem with that? Not really. The dog seemed to try to protect them from the mean bird with the scythe. Uh, they would be okay going with them as well. Sounds good enough for me. So yes, Captain, these children are now under your protection. As Cyril and Sark, you two, are able to make it back to the village. Welcome back. I feel so welcome. As we get back, I'm going to say, hey, uh, did two kids ever make it here? Two Lunars made it. Clarification. Two Lunar Rabbits? Yes. Of a very young age. That murder tried to swing a scythe at. Uh, I'm not. You know what? That's fine. Chuck Are they still Chuck's alive? Still... What? Are, are the kids still alive? Yes. And for those who are curious, um, the scythe would cut murder. He is a monster doing monstrous things to make a better world. A better world that he would not be allowed to live in. Who says that? Uh, that was just that was just an out character thing for murder. Uh, query. Why would they believe such a thing to be a good idea under any circumstances? Because well, just, like judges. just for some context, but those kids think they're here spying, but they're uh, they're not really. They're, they're here to be taken as prisoners. So yeah, don't don't let them out, especially during the battle. Um, Captain Hal's speaker is kind of with the group. Captain Hal himself isn't actually there, but he does speak uh the speakers does speak it just says like um do not worry about that they will be with me when my group in our tent and i do not intend to let them out of anyone's sight they will be well attended ah okay well sweet and then i'll basically fill them in on the fact that uh we tricked them into uh yeah, thinking that we were commanding officers and we told them to go and spot, quote unquote, spy on the village as a way of getting them here to protect them. Something tells me they have been dissuaded of that. You know, if that's what has happened, then better for it. Query, this scythe that judges, what would it have done if it judged poorly? All I know is that it is a bladed weapon, and bladed weapons will always do what a weapon does. Statement. I do not trust the judgment of inanimate objects. I will also speak to the and to tell them that, uh, by the way, this is what the general looks like. Um, we were able to cause a little bit of uh, 
a little bit of ruckus in the camp and uh, make things a little bit more difficult for them. But other than that, we were able to collect some information. And then I would share said information with them. Yes, you have the camp location, you have the layout of the camp. You have numbers, you have the general, his appearance, where his tent is. You basically have every little bit of information you could possibly hope for on the enemy camp and location and such. The only thing we don't have is when they're going to attack. I would imagine that they will be attacking soon. My, uh, Reason for that is, without food, they will need to gather supplies sooner rather than later. Well... There is one thing they could try to do. Uh, Murder does say to the question about the scythe. The scythe does not judge them, they judge themselves. If they are found to be dishonest on their path, the scythe will not protect them from its wrath. Oh, okay. So if if someone So if someone is dishonest of themselves, was that what was said? If Basically they they're lying. Yeah. It will hurt them. And uh, is murder present to explain this? Yes. Okay. Uh, Cyril's going to look over at that and simply say, Observation. So you would swing a weapon at a child, which is a being that is known for lying, and potentially murder them. Well, how could it murder? It was used on me, and it did nothing to me. Therefore, it is not a bladed weapon. Explanation. The, cr the crow here has stated how the weapon works. It works on those who tell lies. Therefore, if the children were lying, then it would have most certainly done damage to them. Damage which, in their case, may have been fatal. Yes, if they had lied to such an extent that they need to be judged as such, then yes. And if they were doing what I told them to do, which was pretend to surrender but actually spy on the enemy camp, then they would have been lying. So it would have hurt them. Yes, the, you, guys um, also, you guys also would have been told about the person who protected the children. This, uh... The mist. Aizu, chosen of mist. <clears throat> he seemed to know what was going on, and he had protected the children, using the mist to make sure that they could not make contact with the scythe. Uh, Weird. And what would you have done if this Aizu was not present? That basically would have confirmed they were lying to the scythe, because it would have hurt them. Well, yeah, but the, the thing that what Cyril here is posing is, hey, you almost killed some kids. He would have aimed for their legs. Ah, uh, yes. Just... Because oh, removing the legs, a child can definitely deal with that kind of bloodlust. Yeah, it, it takes a little while, but... Captain Howe's speaker just starts to glare at murder. He doesn't say anything, he just glares. And what was, the, what was the other thing that they may do to get food? Uh, this type of army... They very well could eat the women. 
if they're pushed to it. I guess we can't eat the horses. Those are too valuable. Yeah, these are. This is something that you would know, Guaco, from your stories about Anathema and such. They, the the lunars especially, can be man eaters. <laughs> in some stories. We're gonna have to go over there, take care of their captain, and bring the kids back. So they don't eat the captives. You know where they are, it would just be a matter of figuring out, uh... When you would want to go and how you would want to do it. Whatever is decided, we must be careful. I do not want any kids to be harmed. If we're going to do this, we're, we should do it at night. And do it quietly. And as soon as possible. You have about four or five hours before sunset right now. So if you wanted to, you could try to launch an attack tonight. Sounds good. But you would be without Nevis's army and such. All we need to do is get rid of that captain and convince the kids. If we do it right, we won't need an army. This is true. Whatever is done, I am resistant to bring the bird man along. I feel like he will be he will hurt the kids. If things go south though, we're gonna need as much muscle as we can. Uh Sark, Ciro, both of you can report also that the children that you guys came across. Very much, most of them did not want to be there doing what they were doing. This very much seems like they are being coerced and forced into doing this. Coerced and forced. Yeah, it very much seems like... Mm, then send me at a target that you know is guilty. Send me at this captain. Sounds good. Let's go and see. I'm going to turn to murder and say, if you can kill him quietly, I will can deliver him to you. It is apparent that I cannot stop any of you. So may I please come along so that I may take care of the kids? Yes. Yes. Reply. Yes. <laughs> and at that. Okay, um, sorry about that. Um, what are you. Okay. I, I lost. Uh, I was listening, but lost a bit here. What is being planned regarding the kids? Basically, protecting the kids. And what was Rygon's comment Casper. about? You suck eggs. He wants to take in the ch the children and basically keep them from fighting and keep them safe. Yeah, he'll be the guardian of the kids. Yeah, yeah. So, so during whatever scuffle, he will use his group to essentially round them up and keep them safe as best he can. Um, as well as his persuasion, whatever else he needs to do. But he wants to keep them out of the fighting. I'll turn to Nevis and say, the plan is tonight, when it's dark, we're going to sneak in, free the kids, free the captives, because considering that they don't have very much food left, if any at all, there's a chance apparently they could eat the captives. 
and we don't want that to happen. Understood. We will go in and take out the leader. We also have influence, Kerr. I sent it to you. I approve it. You are not required to approve these, you know. I know, but I approve okay. this one. I think it will be a very interesting, dramatic moment to overcome. What do you mean and... he's not required to approve it? <laughs> it's not necessarily the DMs good are for you guys. To, the DMs are allowed to approve or deny influence. Influence. Right. Just, but, but, like, they need to either approve or deny so they, they are required to. No, 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 he meant I don't always have to say yes. He's uh, been saying yes to all the yeah. stuff that's been coming in tonight. All three mm -hmm. of them. Because I enjoy watching you guys suffer and struggle. And we're actually getting influence for the Exalted game. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yes, I, I, I enjoy watching you guys uh deal with issues, especially in Exalted, where most of this stuff is going to be very trivial for you guys to actually overcome anyway. This raises the difficulty by, like, one. And for you guys, it's like, okay, eh, I can do this. Ah, I see. I must use at least 1% of my brain. Very clever, chat. Oh, Alright, so you have a few hours before sunset. Is there anything you guys would like to do beforehand? Um, Captain Howe will be spending the majority of the time talking to the two children to get an idea of how best to prepare himself so that he can protect, so he can understand who he needs to be talking to, what the kids will react best to, that sort of thing. Okay, okay, give me a presence roll, please. Pleasant presence plus your best attribute. So I believe that will be ten dice for you. And I yeah. think I had two successes and they burst, so I just rolled those two again. Yep, those tens count as two successes. So you have four successes so far. Minus one, because you have a one, so three so far, and then you roll those two tens again. And they're both ones. Wow! One success. Uh, that do is... Do you want the... to use... Do you want that... to re-roll that? that that's I enough. do, yes. <laughs> that, that is enough to get what you would like, though, from this. They are not going... They are not resistant. This is you only needed one success. <laughs> Yay. Uh yeah, so you you did a good job trying to protect them and getting them on your side. So this is not something that you would that would be very difficult for you to do. Uh they would be more than happy to explain basically how it is. Basically they're treated little better than slaves. They are forced to do the worst jobs. Uh, they have to obey whatever they're told to do. They don't really have a choice in anything. And if they resist or argue or fight back at all, they basically get beaten with an inch of their life. Okay. Then what Captain Howe will do is he is going to have his followers wear a like a yellow armband or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he's going to essentially be telling the kids, follow the yellow armbands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, they would say that they would basically, the children are probably going to be used as meat shields by the main forces if they're attacked. And the children very much are likely not going to want to fight back. But they're to them, they're likely not to have a choice. If they don't fight, uh, they'll basically be killed by the uh, soldiers themselves. They don't have a choice in the matter. I'm also just going to briefly, as the kids are walking by, I'm just going to be lying on a wall, just 
keeping an eye, making sure that you know they're okay. Yes, yeah, so they seem they seem very at ease with Captain and his people. They don't Nevis, seem too bothered at all. Nevis was wanting to question them a bit about those things, so he would have gone along with Captain, and we can just skip past, you know, him questioning them yep. himself. They they. They, they seem a little bit more nervous around Nevis, but not that much more nervous. But it's clear that they very much like uh, Captain. I mean, he is big, fluffy doggo. Especially and, since Lunars did this to them. Yeah, that, 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 that's also one of the things, too, for them. But more just, like, they're big fluffy dog protected them and is nice to them so they are more willing to open up to him here and as murder is preparing for combat he will be sharpening and oiling his scythe even talking with it but if anyone tries to listen he would stop till they are out of earshot okay okay he is preparing himself is there anything else anyone is doing as well to prepare? Um, beforehand, uh, Cyril is going to casually approach murder. Okay. All right, does, who are you going to be murdering? Uh, murder. Oh, you're murdering murder? Okay. Yeah. No one can die now. It's safe to die now. Murder well, the you, you're gonna have to. You, you're gonna have to, you know, actually win against murder first. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not a battle. I'm not killing murder. I'm murdering murder. There's a it's difference. done in cold blood, without a chance. Ah. A criminal. Anyways, um. So Cyril's going to walk up. As murder, um, talking with it, but if anyone tries to listen, he would stop until they are out of your shelf. Okay. So murder would probably definitely notice Cyril approach, and Cyril would simply start by saying, uh, informative. It is usually my personal. <clears throat> brain, brain, stop. Word, stroke, help. <laughs> Hold on. I need to compose my words. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Cyril's going to say informative. It is usually amongst some of my own duties and professionals to discreetly dispatch those of distasteful qualities. I'm going to be allowing you to take the lead on this one. Take it as a form of testing, so to speak. Murder will nod very well, and what will I be tested for? Answer. A number of things. Well, he says just a number of things. <laughs> well, that's informative. Thank you. 
said in a very sarcastic voice. Response. You're most welcome. Cyril says in deadpan voice as he says everything. And I'm going to do the simple thing of sitting down cross-legged, hands crossed, putting out a prayer to Nevis, King of Conquerors, that we get through this battle without harming any of the kids. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Mm. Okay. Murder will roll his eyes and focus back on the scythe. Was there anything else? Statement. I would be more mindful on matters involving youths. So, uh... Like, can people actually pray to Nevis now, or...? Uh, yes, it is possible. I mean, we could always pray to Nevis. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, is he gonna hear these prayers, or...? If enough of them come through and repeatedly, yes. Huh. And it will give you essence and such. In other words, you're not gonna hear one prayer. <laughs> So what, Nevis yes, it, is, uh, it has reached godhood now? Already? Not yet. Not yet. I mean, to be fair, you're an exalted. You're uh, you're above gods. That's uh, it, it, some god. Or, okay, a lot of gods, but... The majority of gods. <laughs> The scythe very rarely judges children harshly, but they all must be judged. And I oh, would explain to Nevis while we were in heaven that the severity of the offenses, severity three is violating the creation ruling mandate which is the gods are not supposed to intervene in human affairs unless they're fulfilling their duties and such in solar affairs i mean None shall yes see. though my battle cry may give me away in other now, words if you will now, nowadays, it's don't fuck with the uh, dragon bloods. In other words, if you want the desk job, you need to give up the job of being uh, out on the field. And another influence? Uh, I'm going to deny that for right now. Because it would not be at that point quite yet. Not quite yet. We would need a little bit more time to build that up. Also, uh, Cyril's response to murder's statement is going to be cautionary. Be careful of your willingness to judge others, lest you be judged yourself. And unfavorably at that. And as soon as you say that, you can kind of see just like a a couple of um, Captain Howe's followers just kind of pass by and they both just glare at murder before passing through. Ah, 
happy fun times. <laughs> oh, I have plans for murder. I have plans for murder. Isn't it normally the other way around? Don't worry about it. Murder for plans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that made me chuckle. Murder will laugh at Cyril's statements. He'll run his hand across the blade, drawing blood as he does so. I have already been judged. I am serving my penance as we speak. Take them. The judgment I speak of and the judgment you have experienced are not the same. Just Gus Fring meme, we are not the same. <laughs> and hey look, it's been enough time. Time to go to the battlefield. <laughs> um, question for the DM. Yes. Or how 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 easily could my followers be equipped with arms and armor within this compound? This village really doesn't have that much. Um, it's basically like a farming village. It doesn't really have the equipment necessarily to outfit like an actual fighting force. Okay. The only reason they haven't really been overwhelmed already is because of Ferris. He's basically a walking one-man army. <laughs> then um, my group, uh, other than the the seasoned warriors that are among them, the rest of them will just kind of pick up like kitchen knives, pitchforks, whatever they can. Mm -hmm. Some of them might have like buckets on their head. And when I see them start arming themselves, I'm going to go up to the captain and say, leave your people here they would be more of a danger to themselves than what we can do. I did not tell them to do this. They do this of their own volition. They wish to protect the children, same as I, and who am I to deny them that? I do not wish to see a single one of them harmed, of course, but I also understand I cannot do this alone. The children must be protected. Okay, as long as they're not coming to the actual battle, but staying here. They will come, but they will not be involved in the fighting. Having your people Sorry. in the back to look after the children would actually be a very useful thing. Sark's gonna chime in and say, uh, best not to have them in the camp with us. Of course. But I also cannot assume that any of us will be able to take out all of the enemies. Uh, they must murder... still be able to protect themselves at least somewhat. If... Uh, murder, your army is not currently with you at the moment. You were in a little bit of a rush to get through this gate. Uh, your army is still back on its island at the moment. Be, it was being transported by your boss. He did not expect you guys to uh, go rushing off. He doesn't even know you guys are gone at the moment. <laughs> I'm going to look at Captain Hal and say, if we do this right, we won't need to hurt anyone. We get the kids out. They'll go and, you know, go and be with your people to take them away from the camp. And then we can begin with the carnage. Whether or not we actually fight or do sabotage while they're sleeping is, remains to be seen. I would prefer we do this as quietly and as efficiently as possible. I pray that you are right. Uh, real quick question for you, uh, Guaco. Do you get some of these towns people to start praying to Nevis? Yes. 
if they hey. Okay. Just needed to check on that. Okay. And I think actually this is a pretty good stopping point. Krama has his trip tomorrow slash today. And we are going to be moving into a very big, long battle. So I do not want to rush this battle for you guys. Uh, this is going to be like the first like big, big fight. And I think it's going to take at least an hour and a half, two hours of next week's session to do. <laughs> I can have hope, okay, you guys? I can have hope. I can have hope you guys aren't going to... Just immediately uh, destroy your everything. entire encounter. I can hope, okay. You you can. But I wouldn't get too hopeful. And before Sark just sets the camp on fire and kills most of the people before. Don't worry, there's multiple ways to win a battle. Exactly. And you guys will each get a minor, major, and an exalted uh, keystone. Er, wow, brain, work. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the experience in this one. Oop. Are we getting that... Are we getting that now, or are we getting that um, after we do the battle that you're talking about? Now. Oh, cool! Yes. <laughs> but we so cannot I... spend it yet. Yes. <laughs> you, I miss... you need to... I'll let you explain. Uh, let me go. You guys should each be up to five in each one. Let me go back Wait, to my book. Wait, five and pick. what? I haven't been five handing minor, out five major. Yeah, I haven't been handing out uh, oh, experience wow. I, like I should have. I was gonna say I've only got one personal, one minor, and one exalt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So let sorry. us know what we should have then. Yeah, that's totally. fine. Bad. I got I got them mixed up. Uh, I'm finding it right now. You should have five personal, five minor, and five. Of what was the last one that you said there? Minor, it was major, major and, and exalted, and five exalted. You should not have any major yet. Did you say that we got a major from this or not? I got I got mixed up with it. You'll get you will get a major after the next session. Okay, cool. So we have five minor, five exalted. And that's I it. forget I forget what and I can five personal. You said. And five, five personal, yes. Hey, oh, okay. I guess I shall wait to spend them since I can't spend them any. All right. Uh, I am finding it right now. Give me a second, and I will read off what these can do for you guys. Well, we can't spend them yet, so I figure we'll go through those uh, when we can actually spend them. Okay, that's fine. When can we? What are the circumstances under which we can spend? So downtime. In yeah in exalted you actually have to take time to train these things mm -hmm. okay it is not like which is something that i actually appreciate for the realism there is we don't just wake up suddenly and it's like oh yeah i know how to cast fireball now no, hold, on, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on hold on i need to i need to put a pause on this whole conversation did you just state that in the game Exalted, there is a point of it that you appreciate for realism. Yes. Uh, <laughs> in the game Exalted, of all of the games. Yes. yes. Because in Exalted, there's also the realism that you punch people and they die. 
That is a that is something that I would like to see other games do as well. I, I think it would be a fun mechanic to them. Here's the thing: like though, exhaustion. Like, my 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 point to that is, I don't think everyone would enjoy that. It's definitely a thing that you could add, most certainly, especially like homebrew rules and whatnot, if like you got a group that's up for it, but I don't feel like everyone would be down for that. Especially if it meant that like, you know, you're in the middle of like a long dungeon crawl in D and D and Note in Exalted, yeah. it can take over a hundred years to raise your essence above like far. Your character has to be alive for a hundred years before they can do that. Oh, Cyril has definitely done a hundred. <laughs> How much is that in dog years? Well, uh, 700. I'm going to be behind you guys for a little bit. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me find. Oh, God. Toshimi, don't say that. Toshimi, don't. Let me have my hope. Oh, what did Toshimi say? Did he say he's going to donate so that we just nuke the boss? I said, I'm sorry for this next battle. Uh. Why do you hate me, Toshimi? Why do you hate me? By the way, what were some of the donations that we are? Have we have like there were there were influences that happened earlier? Did we see those or? Yes, you did. OK, the entire plot line that you guys are currently dealing with right now in Exalted uh it was triggered by toshime's donation uh and a lot of the uh a lot of the changes to how this encounter's going like the fact that we're attacking now is a result of the influences oh mm -hmm. okay i thought that was just us going yeah we burnt down some shit we should no. probably uh the if you guys hadn't done that, it would have gotten worse. Oh. Mm -hmm. What? Okay, uh, okay, I found I found the milestones, everyone. Okay. How would how would not burning their food make it worse? So personal milestones let you either get a new mode for a charm or repurchase a charm, or it allows you to change an intimacy if the story supports it. Uh, uh, usually these are only used rarely uh, if charms require multiple purchases and you'll get that once you start getting stronger uh, minor mi mi milestones let you either pick a new charm or you can use it to increase an ability by plus one and then once you get a major milestone which you will get after the next session you can use that to raise an attribute or change your virtues if you wish it could also technically be used to raise merits i do not allow this in my games if you want to get a merit or raise a merit you basically have to go through the work of getting that thing like if you want to make money and get resources well go find a job take over a company and then begin a hostile takeover of all of creation's uh, resources. You are exalted after all. If you want an artifact, let me know and I can point you to either trying to go on a quest to find an artifact or, hey, look, this enemy has an artifact that you may want. You just have to kick their ass and take it. Um, merits I, I use as role-playing. Like, if you are actively hunting to try to recruit new people to your group that will raise your followers and such and then an exalt milestone can be used either for a personal or a minor milestone gotcha and that is it for the milestones Okay, thank you. Not a problem. Doesn't feel like they do that much. It does enough. 
Yeah, uh, basically, uh, miners are very good. They let you either get a charm or raise an ability by one. Oh, uh, raise an ability. I missed that part. Yeah. You can use a minor minus milestone to raise an ability by plus one, too. Okay. So you either, you either get a charm or you get uh, ability plus one. And it's the major milestones that give you the attributes. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, yeah, so you cannot spend them at this current moment. You will be able to spend them after the end of deck session because there will be some downtime uh, after you guys deal with this army and force. You will have a chance to rest and have a week or two to get your bearings, get everything set up and all that. And during that time, we can have our training montages for everybody to raise their attributes and abilities. Who's going to seduce the rabbit leader to lead us to Mahasuchi? Yes. Mahasuchi uh, is. The social food character. The bane of every, uh... The bane of every, uh, DM's existence. Hey, be glad. I'm not trying to seduce. I just want everything to pet me. That's basically seduction. And you know it. He's not wrong. It's seduction with extra steps. <laughs> Bow, wolf, chicka, wolf, wolf. <laughs> Bow, wow, wow. Don't worry. Everything will be fine, everyone. Everything will be peachy keen. Well, let's be honest, my rolls have been shit, so I doubt I'm going to do anything, if I, even if I tried. Yeah, yeah, murder, you, you do horrible things with your scythe. Yeah, it, it, if you go after someone who is not exalted, it's going to end very badly for them. It's going to end very, very horribly for them. It's going to hurt and exalt anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Murder Scythe will hurt me. Which is an accomplishment, I have to say. So will my son go. I will right. say, I will say hmm? this. Because I am a dragon blooded solar. I'm lying in either way and that's against your scythe. Yep. Alright. I, I, I will say if that, I will say if that scythe gets brought against those kids Nevis is going to be uh, in the way for it. And he will fight. Mm -hmm. all right. I'm going to be heading off, everyone. Thank you all for coming. I hope you guys had fun. Yes. Everything. Have a good, good night. Good night. Good all night. right, good everyone. Night. Thank you all so much for joining us for Evan Sales Exalted. I will be back in a few minutes with some more streaming. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Twitter, Patreon, and more. They are on the website as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, donators, and subscribers. It is because of your support that I'm able to continue bringing these streams to you all. I really cannot do this without your guys' help and support, so thank you. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It is one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by grabbing some card packs through stream loots, throwing stickers on the screen like Toshime just did, or uh, by simply sharing the streams around. But for now, thank you for joining, and I bid you the most fundest a duke. Duke. Bye-bye, everyone.